Real quick, before we jump into this video, it is time to announce the winner of the 2022 Honda CRF 110. I'm very excited. I haven't even called the person right now. We're gonna make the phone call in this video. Um, our sweet stakes company reached out to me, gave me the name of the winner. I went and pulled their order, and well, he has his order under a uh, roofing company. And this roofing company just so happens to be in California, which, you know, this is the first time we've had a giveaway actually land in our home state. So I'm gonna call this guy up under the guys that, uh, well, I'm gonna tell him who I am, but I'm gonna tell him that I need some roofing done, like at the guard shack or something over here. And we'll see if we can kind of bait him in that way, and then we'll let him know that he won the 2022 Honda CRF 110 giveaway at workfortapparel.com. And if he's anything like the contractors I know, he's not gonna answer his phone, because he probably gets spam calls all day long. Let's see. Also, I swear, if you ever see people do giveaways, and somebody answers on the first time, never happens in real life. All right, guys, we're gonna try one more time here. It is Monday morning. He is probably very busy doing the roofing. Come on, Brad. Answer me, buddy. It makes for a much better video when you answer. You got Brad, leave a message. All right, guys, I've resorted to texting because we've got no phone call or no answer. So uh, hopefully he calls us back. Right, guys, well, it looks like the text message might have worked. Hello? Is this roll the outro, D-Max Rhino? Hey, man, I heard you on a roofing company. <laughs> yeah. You, you can you I, do. I, I need to get some roofing done on my guard shack at my guest house. Oh, dang, you can't get anybody down there in San Diego. I know it's a little far for you. A big time far. That's like Mexico far. We were down there for a big job a couple years ago. I would have definitely got it done then, but shit, we're, we're not down there right now. Oh man, that, see that kills me because now now like I don't want to give you the CRF one ten that you won. What? <laughs> yeah, brother. Congratulations, man. You're the winner of our uh, CRF 110 giveaway. No way. <laughs> Holy cow, dude. That is, I, I never win anything. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. It looks like you bought, uh, what was it, like four shirts? Something like that? Yeah. There you yeah. go. Not a bad way to get a uh, brand new bike, huh? No kidding, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that is awesome. I'm stunned right now. I'm speechless. Alrighty, y'all. Well, the winner has been notified. It's freaking awesome. I love being able to give back to you guys in some way, shape, or form. And it's even better when they are super stoked on winning the last CRF 110 that we give away. The guy didn't even know he had entered. He just saw a guy at a gas station with a work for decal said hey where'd you get that went on the website bought it not even knowing that was entering him to win so it's even cooler when they know they entered and they are super excited now that that's over let's roll to this video Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Just took my commute to work today. We've got a few things that are gonna be going on in this video. Number one, we are going to be uh, jumping back on the fence here, hopefully getting this finished. Then I will show you, I kind of teased in the last video that we're gonna be doing a little, a little change to the backyard there. So we'll show you what we're doing there and why we're doing it. And then uh, we should be pouring concrete as well in this video, which will happen tomorrow. Good news is, if you guys uh, watched the previous video, uh, there was a fire that was kind of looming right over there. Thankfully, it has not made its way this way. Yesterday, the winds pushed it away from us. Today, they're pushing it kind of back towards us, but I think it's far enough away at this point. We are good. However, it is super, super hot out here today. It is 7.30, I think, and it's already in the 90s. Supposed to get 102, 103, but they said yesterday would be in the high 90s and yesterday was 104. So I'm anticipating it's about to be 107 and or higher. So we got to get on this here fence wall. We still got a little bit of shade. And then, uh, so I'm gonna start on this side, and then later I'll move over to this side because that side stays in the shade a little bit longer. In the previous video, I gave you a little rundown on my fence design here. So I'm doing a two by six, two by four alternating pattern. I think it just kind of breaks it up, looks cool, looks different. Um, I ended up taking a two by two, shooting it into the side of the four by four here. And that enables me to slap these boards onto the front while still leaving the post as like its own thing. So it kind of looks just like a white vinyl fence where the slats slide into the side versus the fencing that's all around the property where the boards are just sitting on top of the four by four and shot in. So got all of our lumber here. Ow. Grab some more of our two by here. And honestly, if you want to do it cheaper, just buy a two by four, rip it down with a table saw, but I didn't feel like doing that. Cutting these into three foot sections. 
And then I've got my master one here. And sorry, it's a little messy. I haven't really got my workflow going this morning yet. So basically using this one as like a story pole or a legend. And it's got these marks on it. And what these are is this is my screw layout. So I get these all nice and lined up. And then I just transfer this line across. And that just ensures that my screws are all, you know, pretty much in the same spot. And it doesn't look like you just went willy nilly when screwing this on. Is it overkill for a fence like this? Yes. However, it's a good practice to get into because a lot of people just like to shoot screws wherever. And to me, that doesn't look good. So if you see here, we've got our screw placement. Well, I missed a screw, so <laughs> glad I just checked this. All right, right here, look at our screw layout. Everything looks good and they're gonna be in the same spot all the way down the row. Um, and again, it just kind of ups your level of carpentry. For this application, not that necessary, but you're gonna come across something one day, um, whether you're building furniture or whatever it may be, that you're gonna wanna do this. So practice it while you can, and uh, just kind of get in the good habit of using it. Now, she just flushes out here with the top, and my top cuts on these four by fours were not the greatest. Been cruising right along here, got most of this side done. I'm on my last panel here, and this is the one where we're gonna have a pretty big gap underneath because again, the driveway obviously slopes down and out of here. So I contemplating adding another board on the bottom, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it needs it. I mean, our gap's not that much bigger right there. We can fill this in a little bit with some gravel and worst case scenario, we could take a little piece of wire and kind of like some of the fencing's done around the property, just a little, little piece of barbed wire tacked to the bottom there is enough to keep the animals from trying to crawl under. That being said, it's not like any donkeys get in there. The goats could probably get in there, but a better piece of wire would keep them out. So I'm just gonna keep it as the same four slats going across and finish this side up. Well, we've been out front all day working on the fence. Um, I still have to finish this side. The guys have been back here. We've got the curb all set. Um, so it's about six inches by the time they dug down underneath that board by six inches. So it'll be a six inch by six inch curb. We run one bar of number three rebar inside. That's three eighths rebar. You'll see a lot of guys that do like those curbing machines where they set like curbs around planters and stuff. And it's like a machine that basically you put uh, cement into and it, as you walk it along, it basically puts out a perfectly formed curb. Problem with those machines is they don't get rebar in it. And while a lot of companies don't put rebar in their curbs, it's, it's a horrible idea not to. Curbs are gonna crack. This is gonna crack. It's only that much by that much concrete. It's gonna eventually crack. The thing about the rebar is the rebar is gonna keep it from wanting to lift up or shift or like basically fall apart. It's gonna be cracks in it. It's gonna move a little bit over the years, but it's never gonna wanna separate into whole chunks as if it didn't have rebar in it. They also went ahead and put our rebar in our wall here. Obviously you guys know when we poured these footings, we had our rebar sticking up. Depending on how we do it, we typically don't go full height with that rebar. They're typically about three to four feet, depending on the walls, depending on what it calls for. So what we do is we put in drops. And let's see if I can show you guys right here. We've got two bars on the top here. Obviously there's rebar all the way through. We put that in when we were building the wall. And then we've got these drops, which are right here that we cut and we drop in every cell that ties in to where the vert is coming out of the footing. That way, once we grout this thing, everything is locked together. The wall is locked to the footings. We've also got this pad all nice and set up. 
So again, this is gonna be kind of like an RV parking-ish area. Obviously, you're not gonna fit a full-size RV back here, but you will be able to fit a car and a trailer or whatever. So all the rebar is tied here. We had a, a couple of things we had to work with here. Obviously, this existing patio slopes that way. Over here, we want the water to slope out that way. So this is kind of our breaking point. So the way we set the forms up was to kind of match that grade, get the water to fall that way, but then at the same time, we have the water falling out this way. That way it doesn't get trapped in that corner back there. It'll all go into those planters. Those planters have a ton of drains, so the water should be great getting on out of here. And then again, same thing on this side. Um, we've shifted it that way and then kind of kicked it that way so it's going away from the garage door. We're also solving a ton, a ton of runoff issues just by putting this wall in. Last year in rainy season, this whole guest house almost got flooded because the water just flew down the property. Um, obviously after all the fires and stuff, there's just not a lot of vegetation to slow the water down. So it all came and it hit the corner of this property really hard. Um, thankfully we were able to get it out of here before it flooded the guest house, but I think we just eliminated any of those issues by putting these walls in and now getting all this concrete set. And here is our addition that we kind of made a little audible change on here. So this entire area right here is all gonna be turf. Again, planters, curb to separate it turf and we're like ah that's cool but it's kind of boring it's never good enough for us we always got to try and go above and beyond so you'll see this square below me here what that's going to be is a concrete pad there'll be turf all around it on both sides so you'll kind of have a little step over onto this pad and then uh, it'll be just an eight foot by eight foot concrete pad that you can put a fire pit on some chairs maybe at some point we'll build a little pergola above it not exactly sure um but i think it's gonna be cool and since we already have the concrete truck out here might as well do it all at once now that we're switching sides here i'm gonna move my mobile shop and uh saw stand there to the other side i gotta tell you guys man i wish this thing ran good because it's just so freaking useful um it just breaks my heart breaks my heart that she don't run good but what does run good is this milwaukee uh, cordless miter saw if you guys are on the fence i know by now they've been out for a while but you guys might be like me where sometimes you hold off on purchases you know until you really feel like it's worth it and this thing's freaking worth it i've been on a non-fully charged xc50 not even a high demand battery and we are at three bars there i don't know if you guys can see that on the gopro but Three bars did all of this. I know it's not a ton of work. These things run forever on one battery. 110% worth every single penny. If you're on the fence, go buy you a Milwaukee Miter Saw. It is also a million freaking degrees in this thing. The steering wheel is boiling. Come on, old girl. Come on, old girl. We got this, we got this, all right. Woo. side of the fencing is done there's gonna be a little wing here with a six by six post that I'm gonna hinge the gate off of so if I have time that will get put in tomorrow once we have a little bit of concrete here so see you guys bright and early in the morning all right y'all today is the concrete pour day it's supposed to be one of the hotter days that we have dealt with in the last couple of days it is 6 30 in the morning right now it is already 80 degrees so uh wish us some luck Make sure I can find all my concrete tools here. Got my float and my belt. I don't have my margin trowel. Oh, crap, I think I left that at the restaurant. Oh, poor trowel. A little rusty. Just like my concrete finishing skills. We've got Papa Rhino pulling up. We got the homies with A1 concrete pumping. If you want to nose in here, that's cool. Alrighty, y'all, our first truck is here. I'm on the 110. We're gonna head down to the gate, let him in. So here we go, truck number one. It's, it's getting pretty warm out. Truck is backed up to the pump. We are ready. Once we start, there is no stopping for today. So fuel up now. 
So we opted to grout this wall first. That way, um, you know, we don't pour the flat work on the other side here. And as we're going, sometimes as you top out a little bit falls, you can see um, kind of down the side of the wall here. We've got a couple spots. We're gonna get cleaned real quick. Because we are not gonna have time to come back and do this later. Pour a bead, pour a bead, catch it up, and let us float it, and then we'll do the middle. today with the GoPro is uh, fighting us again. So we got a little bit of time left, so I kind of missed it. Uh, we're currently fighting the mud and the hopper right now with the pump because it's so hot. Um, obviously we can only pump out so much at a time as we're kind of working our way back. We don't want them to get too far ahead of us. The uh, mud started stiffening up a little too much in the hopper of the pump and it won't pump through right now. So they're out there fighting that. We're fighting to get this trowel before it fully goes off on us. I'm running the edger right now. And then once Papa Rhino jumps back on this to hard trowel the whole thing, he'll uh, edge it again. That's just the preliminary to get the edge cut in there. If we don't do it now, we won't be able to do it later. Paparano is a beast though, because most concrete finishers would want two to three guys for today or more. Paparano's like, we'll get it. Lay it down and broom it once. Just call it good. Oh, no, I know about it. I don't have a slide. Oh, there's one. So now the race is on to get these joints cut in. Over there, it looks like it's going in all right. It's a little hard, but right here, this little spot that's been in the sun, it's gonna fight us a little bit. Slash maybe a lot of it, hopefully not. Got a hammer.
All right, so Paparano's racing to get that done. I'm gonna try and stay ahead of him and trowel it with this. This is called a silly trowel. So you can see it's kind of double, triple jointed there. And you can kind of mimic a hand motion with this thing. Um, it's obviously not as good as using your hands. I mean, it could be, but it's better to get out there on your knee boards. It's better to get out there on your knee boards. I also don't have a lot of experience with it, so this should be interesting. Guys, I might be on something here. I might be on something. Might have just had the joints in the wrong way. Maybe. Feel like I'm doing more harm than good. We made a couple little holes there. Oh, this is working much well. Well, all right, spoke too soon. All right, y'all, so this is how we transfer our line here to know where to cut our joint because our board doesn't reach all the way across. So we're just gonna take a string line. We've already marked it out over there before we start pouring. Right to this edge, you good? And then we just and then do it. snap it a couple times. There go. And that leaves the mark. And then Paparano used a the trowel there to mark where the edge of those wings are. We just line it up to that edge. And then he can run his joiner across it. Slash beat it in with a hammer. The what? <laughs> now this here is called a tinker because it goes tink when you hit it. And when your joints are this hard, you gotta tink them in. Not ideal, you gotta pull that out. Not a good day. I apologize for the super cut up footage guys. The GoPro is just not liking it today. So everywhere past Paparano right there is dead. So that's all gonna get broomed right now as we're kind of working our way over. Try to do it from inside the garage here. There we go. It's kind of a little jacked up. Okay, right, so we scrapped from the garage. That's not gonna work, so we're gonna try from up top of the wall here. Much better, much better. Is this all dead right here? You good with this? Fortunately, no, part of it's in the shade. The best not helping that much because the temperature. This just goes off. Run, run me what? sideways. Yeah. You got here at what? Seven o'clock. All right. So you probably bashed out at six o'clock. Takes yeah. about an hour to get here. So he was. Uh, you want to jump over here for that? You want to go? Ah, no, because it's too tall for that fucking ceiling. Like once I get past the roof. All right, this one done. Kill it, yeah. killing it. Fire will be out right now. See so guys, this is why we call A1 concrete pumping <laughs> and rotting. A1 concrete pumping and rotting. They know we're dealing with this thing going off. Everybody jumps in to help. We appreciate it, bro. Hell yeah. 
Can we get a little pile on the ground? Yes, sir. Not a big one, just. Yeah, anywhere's fine. Over here in the shade, right? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> How much do you need down below? Poquito arriba, ese es bueno, Evo. Porque I think it's going oil, poquito. Let's last is grout, right? That's it. So we have wet it. Pump. I'm gonna do a small like one hopper washout real quick. Okay. That'll be enough water for him to juice gotcha. it up. Okay. And then we're gonna move. Good. Get his muscles for you. Oh, let's move it. Move it. Let me see. Ese es exacto del otro más flat, es mejor. Es maybe un rocky. O maybe sucio. Ese es mi problema. Alrighty, well, Papa Ronald got this side done. Having a wet broom it just to, uh, you know, see a little dry. See a little dry. And then we got this part laid down. Um, just floated. Table's going ahead right there, broom in the curb. Curb was all laid down, edged and troweled. So really the last piece we got is here. The pumper and the concrete truck are gonna run out to the gate. They are going to be grouting the pump house walls. I don't have time to run down there and film that. We're gonna be stuck here finishing this. You guys can see we just got this laid down about five minutes ago and she's already going off pretty good. So we poured it really wet. Well, Papa Rado's got it handled up at the guest house, so I'm gonna head down to the pump house and show you guys that getting poured out. Now over here, I left these cutouts to be able to grout this part of the wall. Um, and I saved those plugs because you have to put the plugs back in and put some weight on top of them so we stack some block on top. Otherwise, once you grout above that, it, the mud all wants to push out. Well, apparently these guys threw the plugs away, so we didn't have that. So this side started gushing out, you can see right there. Um, so Hefe's gonna get in here and clean this up. And just like that guys, it is uh, 10 o'clock. We started, we got, like, everybody got here around 6, 6.30, got set up, uh, pump got here at seven, truck showed up about 7.30 and we started pumping at eight. So in two hours, that's completely dead and broomed. Our little fire pit pad right here is completely dead and broomed. All the curbing is done and the pump house is all nice and grouted. So concrete days like this when it's hot are crazy. However, it gets done quick. We got it. Oh. And the heat. All right, everybody Dan wants a, a, a Papa Rhino shirt. What's your shirt gonna say? You know what it's gonna say. We don't know. We don't stop till the job's done. Oh, hold on, he's got another one. What? We got another one for these guys out there. Boys make excuses, men make plans. It's been his favorite thing for the last two days. Now that the concrete is done, we saved about a wheelbarrow's worth of concrete because we need to put in the last post here. I know it's gonna be a little bit loud. That shows you how hard the dirt is. Hold on, let, let, let's just do a little, a little dirt hardness test. That's how hard the dirt is out here. Um, so these posts will lock in pretty good when you compact them. Anyways, on this side, I'm gonna end up putting a six by six post, and then that's what we're gonna attach the hinges to for the gate. So I wanna make sure number one is a six by six, so by the time I put my big old lag bolt hinges in there, um, there's enough meat around it to you know be okay. And then we're gonna, set this one in concrete that way we don't ever have any kind of weird issues um, i'm sure over time it'll stay but if i get like five years out of this fence i'll be happy i contemplated doing a three foot block wall all the way around the property and at this point i probably should have um i know you guys like when i talk pricing so let's give you a little rundown on some of the pricing material wise on here uh about 720 dollars in wood for this fence not including the six by six post so about about 780 dollars in wood um, concrete wise today, it got a little expensive. It gets more expensive when you live out in the middle of nowhere. They add $150 per truck to get it out here, plus a fuel surcharge on top of that. So just concrete today, not including the pump, labor, or anything like that, was $3,700. That's just for the two trucks of concrete. Then we got top, then you gotta add in the pump. That is not cheap. All these guys labor, um, you know, we save a little bit of labor by me and Papa Rhino doing a lot of the work, but it gets very, very pricey. Okay, we've got our hole dug here. We've got our concrete ready. That rod right there is 12 feet. It's gonna simulate the gate. Do we need a little more than 12 for the No, nope, they, account, they account for it. Okay. The gates are four inches shorter. Turn the 
Yeah. Ugly side that way. Now, just to show you guys how important it was that we jumped on this and jumped on it quick. All this concrete right here is already dry and hardened. I mean, clearly I'm walking on it. Um, you know, we already got the guys stripping the forms on the curves here. This stuff just went off like that. And then I put a bunch of marks here. We're gonna have Chava come in and just saw cut some joints in the curb. Again, things we always talk about concrete, it's guaranteed that it's gonna crack. So what you do with these control joints, is you're trying to tell it to crack there. And we put them in typical spots where it's gonna crack. Like on corners like this is definitely a spot that a crack's gonna develop off of this corner. So we hit both corners there. And then we ran one off of the corner here. And then these were just kind of spacing out evenly. Does it always work 100%? No. But we do our best to get them to crack just in those control joints and uh, hell for the best. You know, concrete is just always gonna crack. That just is what it is, it's nature of concrete. The fire pit pad is looking absolutely freaking killer. Uh, can't wait to see this thing once there's turf over here. The turf's gonna run down and again, it's gonna kind of be its own little island. Maybe at some point, we'll end up building a sweet little pergola over it. I think it would be pretty rad. We got Bubbles the inspector inspecting the six by six post. Once I figure out the gate height, I'm gonna trim that down. A lot of the like commercially available gates are a little bit taller than the fence. So I don't wanna trim that and then the gate ended up being higher even though the hinges could be lower. Anyways, I'll worry about that later. I'm gonna wait for that post to set up as well before I uh, tie it into the rest of the fencing. So we are pretty much done here. I mean, all the forms are stripped. Everything is looking good. Um, obviously the next step here is uh, turf, well next step is we got to waterproof the wall, do a little bit of backfill, um, get the turf and all that, but old Rhino's wallet needs to recover a little bit. I know a lot of people think like YouTube's this great like freaking cash cow and uh, you know while the income from YouTube does help, it definitely does not offset the cost of doing something like this. I mean I gave you guys just the material cost of the last two days, not even accounting for the labor. And I can guarantee you this video that took two days to film doesn't come anywhere near <laughs> offsetting the cost of like any part of this at all. Um, again, it helps. It's definitely nice to have, um, you know, to, to help a little bit towards it, but uh, it definitely takes having multiple income streams to be able to do this kind of stuff. With that, we're gonna wrap up. I'm super stoked to see how this is coming along. We were so close, so close to just like knocking this whole backyard off my to-do list and uh, get the guest house ready for a turnover, you know? Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Now I gotta go to my second job now this is done and I go to the shop and do a bunch more filming. Ah, the days never end on two hours of sleep. I'm out. Damn. Uh.